Guys, the police officers do not pull over black people and arrest them. Like, just because they're black. This does not happen. It definitely happens. Uh, demonstrable proof for this to happen. Uh, the arrest rates and the pullover rates of black people dramatically decline at nighttime when, uh, when cops can't see plan. into the vehicle and, and discern whether a uh, driver is black or white. It's like a 5x uh, likelihood that you will uh, get pulled over during uh, daylight than at nighttime. I don't know if it's actually 5x. Hold on. Let me look at the, the study that was done on this. Hold on. Yes, uh, black drivers get pulled over uh, by police less at night when their race is obscured by the veil of darkness, according to a Stanford study. After analyzing 95 million traffic stop records filed by officers of 21 state patrol agencies and 35 municipal police forces from 2011 to 2018, researchers concluded that police stops and search decisions suffer from persistent racial bias. Um, the largest ever study of alleged racial profiling during traffic stops has found that two that that black people who are pulled over more frequently than whites by day are much less likely to be stopped after sunset when a veil of darkness masks their race. That is one of the several examples of systemic bias that emerged from a five-year study that analyzed 95 million traffic stop records filed by officers of 21 state patrol agencies and 35 municipal police forces from 2011 to 2018. 18. The Stanford study also, uh, the Stanford-led study also found that when drivers are pulled over, officers search the cars of blacks and Hispanics way, uh, more often than whites. The researchers also examined a subset of data from Washington, Colorado, two states that legalized marijuana, and found that while this change resulted in fewer searches overall, and thus fewer searches of blacks and Hispanics, minorities were still more likely than whites to have their cars searched after a pullover. Um, our results indicate that police stops and search decisions suffer from persistent racial bias and point to the value of police interventions to mitigate these disparities, the researchers wrote on uh, on the May 4th issue of Nature of Human Behavior. Uh, I want to see what the, uh, what the percentages are, though. I want to see, like, how much more likely uh, they are to do such a thing. I wish I could see it. His chat was disagreeing with him, too, so I guess that's a silver lining there. Yeah. Um, it's a 20% higher chance to get stopped during the day. 1.5x to 2x chance to get searched. That's what the that's what it says. Hold on, let's see. Um, data set of nearly 100 million traffic stops. Black drivers were about 20% more likely to be stopped than white drivers relative to the share of the residential population. The study also found that stop, uh, black drivers were about 1.5 to two times as often uh, searched, about 1.5 to two times as often uh, as white drivers, while they were less likely to be carrying gu uh, drugs, guns, or other illegal contraband compared to their white peers. For example, in Texas, about 25% of uh, drivers stop right before sunset were black, compared to about 20% just after dusk. Um, if you have watched, uh, of course, if you watched We Own the City, which is not fictional, but a very real story about policing in Baltimore, you would recognize that uh, this is commonplace. Nice job finding Chat reliable, unbiased source from idea. a liberal arts college. Oh, come on, brother. 12 month subscriber. He's fucking trolling. Good troll, brother. You got me. Okay. <laughs> Motherfucker's like 100 million traffic stops. Not enough. It should be 200 million. Maybe then it would change. <laughs> does it happen sometimes? Yes, it does. To say it happens all the time is ridiculous. It's a misrepresentation of what actually happens. It's deliberately disingenuous. It's harmful for the community. It doesn't help anybody. It's just a unnecessary exaggeration to make things more emotionally charged. This doesn't happen. Uh, it certainly does. So, so the thing is, um, it does happen. He's thinking about you treat a cop well and you'll be fine with so bullshit. That's what he said. I mean, dude, he's a fucking white dude in Texas. Come on. Like. Yeah, it, it, and he, like, literally does not leave his house. Like, obviously, his interactions with police or his experience with police are going to be guided by having that kind of perspective. I'm willing to bet he probably has even a relative that is a cop, okay? So, you know what I mean? That's, that's, how, that's what motivates, uh, that certainly plays a role in the way that people, uh, that certainly plays a role in the way that people view the world, Right? Denying the reality of a race of people is basically racism, though. Such a privileged, out-of-touch uh, take. Hello, we live in America, dude. You are a fucking 19-month subscriber. Of course, dude. Of course. You guys love talking about the, the how racism is socially learned behavior. You love talking about how America is a white supremacist, fundamentally white supremacist country in its foundation with respect to how, uh, you know, slavery happened here. 
And then you turn around and you're shocked. You do the surprise Pikachu face when someone who is otherwise like, uh, uh, you know, a kind person who is very open minded has unintentionally arrived at a conclusion that supports the social conditioning that that many millions of Americans go through on a fucking daily basis. Just that it's just that like this is super common, uh, super commonplace. Like this kind of attitude is super commonplace. And it's important to recognize that it's commonplace. Chat, and it's important to also understand that, like, you. Um, he's a white guy on a gaming platform. I, should, I would have been actually surprised if it was a cab. Yeah, of course not. That's not going to happen. Um, Asmogol probably represents most of the average American takes. Exactly. Recent gaming and fun day it's important to see it, though. And it's pass. important to use this as a learning opportunity so that, uh, you know, people in the future have a better perspective on this matter that is uh, rooted within reality. Okay. Not like you shouldn't point it out just because it's commonplace. I am pointing it out currently. So. Love you, hussy. Asmogold essentially has a few bad apples opinion, which is the opinion of most Americans, unfortunately. Exactly. Yeah, he says it, it happens, crazy, but not all man. the time. How are you even disagreeing? Brother, that's an incredibly charitable interpretation that you are offering this. Okay? When someone says like, oh, black people get fucking stopped and brutalized by police all the time in traffic stops. Why? That is an incredibly commonplace experience for many black Americans. Okay? So if you are standing in opposition of something like that, but leaving it, uh, leaving it open uh, ended, you're kind of, you know, you're, you're kind of personally uh, putting your own seasoning to be as charitable as possible. Hey, but guys, let's see, let's see what he says. It's not remotely true. No, it's not. It, it's not true at all. Happened to How my dad. How to know you have no contact with black people? Yeah. Think about it. Just fucking think about it. Most of the time, this does not happen. I've had plenty of friends of mine that are black that have not had this happen. Why? comply with the police officer be cordial don't be belligerent don't be rude and you're gonna be okay okay that's that's also not true okay so um no that's that uh, it, it, the the actions of the person who is like uh being arrested or being detained uh oftentimes has very little to do with uh the the escalation of violence from the police part of that is because of the training that police get Police don't get training for de-escalation. They get training for only escalation, unfortunately, okay? Uh, I'm not sitting here to be like, there is no use or no purpose for some kind of uh, organization that would operate in, in, in theory, like the way that police are in theory supposed to operate to protect and serve the interests of uh, the, the citizens. Uh, of course, I do believe that. Someone needs to solve the crimes. And it's also otherwise good to have a, to maintain point. a presence of law and order and all this sort of thing. But except uh, in black communities, oftentimes, as I say, regularly, police presence does not imply a presence of law and order, but instead a presence of disorder and lawlessness. Uh, because the way that police operate, especially in uh, poor communities, but has certainly in high. black communities, uh, is, is uh, unfortunately really brutal. Uh, they operate like fucking... Uh, they operate like fucking thugs. This is just how it is. And because that violence is being, uh, th that violence is experienced by, for the most part, people that society has left behind, we fail to recognize its impact and we fail to see it as anything but like a good thing. And when I say we, I mean like Americans in general think that cops suppo are supposed to be a little brutal because they're being a little brutal to the criminals and the criminals kind of deserve it. You know what I mean? That's like the attitude. So as far as like, yeah, it doesn't happen in every single interaction, but that doesn't mean anything, especially if you, if you add on the just comply and you will be fine attitude to the conversation, especially when like people don't even want to say, people don't even want to recognize like where the fear and, and uh, feelings, the negative feelings that people have towards cops, especially if they're black, especially if they're from a poor neighborhood, come from. That comes from the police operating as an occupying force in said neighborhoods. That comes from cops doing uh, unjustifiable stops with very little probable cause. That comes from cops routinely uh, abusing their unlimited power that they have over a population. And that comes from a lack of answers or a lack of accountability that is built into the system because cops are supposed to be brutal because they're being brutal to the right people, okay? You have to also understand that as a black person, we sometimes have finite energy and patience when it comes to this attitude from people who are supposed to be allies. Why would Asmin even talk about this with such confidence and yet be so wrong and uninformed while still talking 
I think they're a good person. The dude just said that to 80,000 people shaking my head. I think, um, I think Asmund Gold would be able to change his mind on this, uh, uh, on this issue. That's all I'm stating. Please target minorities disproportionately, especially true whenever you fact in population percentage. I think that is probably true in some cases. And yes, I, I, what part of that do you think that people are so stupid? People are so, you're killing the mods? Maybe look at actual data? I have, I've seen it. But as that's a logical conclusion. Let me see here. Remember, I'm police officers, good and bad. I support police officers, but hate police unions who protect bad cops. Well, I think so too. But who keeps them accountable and who keeps those people accountable? Um, police are supposed to be held accountable by the population, but it doesn't work that way because policing as an institution in this country is designed in a way to, again, separate those who free. have from the have-nots. And the have-nots are also oftentimes racialized as a consequence of systemic racism like redlining and underfunding black neighborhoods. Okay, it is a much more comprehensive problem than just simply stating cops are just racist and that's why they're doing racism. Okay, regardless of the validity of what I say, just want to mend the situation in the policing community. Exactly. Uh, the dude most black people I've talked to have never. Uh, I've talked to a situation and pulled over for just a check. This never happened, to my white ass. Uh, I'm sure it has happened. Just because I say that this doesn't happen as like every single time or the norm doesn't mean that it doesn't happen at all. That's ridiculous. These are two completely different things. Do you see what I'm saying? Like any reasonable person that looks at this would know that. And I think the people that are misunderstanding what I'm saying are doing it intentionally because they're emotionally invested in the subject. I think part of the reason could be Yeah, they're, because... they're emotionally invested in the subject. I think part of the reason why people are emotionally invested in the subject, however, is because of like, uh, you know, my cute boys their own personal experiences, the experiences of people that are in their families. They could be um, the experiences of their friends. That is one reason why it's an emotional subject. I think it's understandable to be an emotional. Uh, th I, I think it's understandable to be emotional in the face of such profound injustice. What do I mean by that? Your tax dollars are directly contributing to a fucking unaccountable and oftentimes very violent group of individuals that are operating exactly like a criminal gang okay but then on top of that they are doing this with your tax dollars and then your tax dollars are contributing to the fucking state funds or the local funds that end up paying out that civil litigation when it inevitably comes down to it because they brutalized another fucking 14 year old black kid or something like, that's completely ridiculous. And those tax dollars are being taken in a lot of instances, especially from a black community, right, that's paying their taxes and going directly into white enclaves that they're setting up outside of that black community so they get the best education uh, possible. Cops have an incredibly, incredibly fucking uh, easy go at, or not easy go, but like cops do have a... <laughs> a semblance of like social democracy they they have like a norwegian style fucking job okay like it's crazy it's wild they get inc they get fat overtime they have so many incredible fucking benefits they are the most protected fucking class of worker in this country because they're class traders their job is to antagonize and stand against the, the class stand in opposition of class interests that's also the reason why their unions are the most powerful fucking unions in this country because they're working at the behest of capital yeah they have insane retirement early and generous and when they fuck up when they fuck up they kill people when they fuck up they brutalize people but that brutalization is baked into what they are supposed to do as a part of their job that's what they're trained to do that's what they think is the right thing to do okay and when they do copping you know, they do cop behavior and they engage in cop behavior and they do what is uh, what cops are supposed to be doing is what they think they're supposed to be doing. And they do it a little too fucking hard. They can still get, uh, you know, paid leave. Yeah, sure. You won't yeah. get overtime. Uh, you will lose your overtime or you're not losing your benefits. You'll get paid leave. And if you fuck up too many times, as long as you're still a fucking earner, as long as you're still making those arrest numbers, as long as you're still, you know, bringing in. In, in uh, certain instances like guns or drugs or anything like that, that's a big dub. So they'll let you get away with it until it becomes such a liability for the fucking precinct that they'll just simply move you to a, a different precinct. Cops and priests are so well protected in this fucking country. It's like cops brutalizing people or murdering them regularly is like a priest fucking all the boys, okay? All the altar boys. Like, you fuck too many altar boys... Well, you know, you're a good priest, but we're going to have to move you to a different parish.
We'll hide it. OMG, we'll save you. Something. We'll make sure that you know you don't ever see the consequences of your horrific, monstrous actions. But we're just gonna have to move you to a different fucking place, okay? And that's exactly what the fuck cops do as well. Not the fucking boys thing, but you know, brutalizing a, a population. That priest was an earner, though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, there is a there is a uh, an earner component to all of this. Yes. Object, and they're not interested in trying to solve the problem or whatever. You're speaking in generalization, trying to argue generalization. I think that's confusing. I think you're right. Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll clarify what I think. And um, uh, I, I think we can just move on from there, right? Because I think this is just going to go on and on and on. Uh, basically, what I think is that most of the time, whenever people have interactions with police, I think that if you look at them as a massive statistic of all of the interactions with police, overwhelmingly, they are positive and they are not basically very negative, the right? Regardless of race or anything. Like <laughs> that's not. Speeches. I mean, this is anecdotal, but like, I live in a fucking, I, I live in a rich neighborhood, okay? And like, <laughs> now, uh, my experience with cops is still very uh, not positive, but especially when I was younger, holy fuck, my experience with, I've never had a positive experience with a police officer. Like, I've literally never in my, and I'm a white person, like, I'm, I'm white, like, that's crazy to me. I, that's why I'm always shocked when people say, like, dude, you know, people have positive experiences with cops. I'm like, I'm always fucking confused because I'm like, did you not go to college at least? You know what I mean? Like, it, it blows my mind, okay? He's rich and white. Of course, he had positive police. First of all, Asmagold wasn't fucking rich his entire life. You're crazy, okay? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? And even then, I think it's attributed to him never leaving his fucking house rather than uh rather than being rich because you think this motherfucker looks rich bro what do you think he drives what do you think he does you can say he's white yes he's very white but it, it, no one is thinking that this guy is a rich guy that uh you shouldn't fucking harass i just don't understand how you can have uh, i personally don't understand how you can have any a, a positive experience with a cop especially because like they have a gun you know what i mean like like, you're literally talking to a dude who could just fucking kill you, okay? And he has his hands on his fucking holster the entire time. How am I going to have a normal conversation with a person who literally has his hands on his fucking holster while we're having a convo? That's not a positive experience. That's a very negative experience. For me in particular, very negative, okay? Not good. Maybe some other people can, can have a positive experience, but like, what the fuck? Like, I... I don't understand that. I, I actually don't understand that. Like, maybe I'm just not American enough to, to be like, no, brother, that's normal. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, do you guys not do that thing where you're driving? I mean, maybe this is the Jersey in me. And I'll tell you this much, because, like, Jersey cops are fucking awful at traffic violations. Like, they are so abusive uh, with, with how they fucking operate. It's a revenue generation uh, strategy for them, obviously. They have fucking literal... They have, like, actual metrics that they need to abide by. Like, people know by the end of the fucking month, you can't, you have to be extra fucking careful not to, not to get, like, any, get into any kind of trouble because by the end of the month, cops are fucking fiending because they need to meet their fucking quotas. And those quotas aren't, like, codified, obviously, but it's very much in existence. And that's, like, it, it's, a, it's a ruthless way that Less they fucking three. operate, right? So, like... Do you, so that's built into me. Like, I know for a fact that by the end of the month, I'm way, way, way more careful when I'm driving around. I'm like, I'm so scared that someone's going to fucking pull me over. And if I see a cop on the street, immediately I'm picking my nose. If I see a cop car Religion is next to me, I'm immediately, boom, immediately. I'm like, well, I'm picking my nose. So very clearly, I could not be doing anything. From the roots of I could not be doing anything, sir. I'm picking my nose. That's like. I immediately go into, whenever I fucking have a cop behind me or something, I'm, I immediately go into, like, I am so comfortable Plus, right now. Look at how comfortable I am that I'm picking my fucking nose. It's just, like, built in. That's a, that's a built-in defense mechanism. Because no motherfucker that's picking his nose is actually on their phone. No motherfucker who's picking his nose is actually doing some weird sus shit, okay? Hot. I started doing that when I heard you say you did that for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> clearly reaching for your nose derringer <laughs> anyway so there you go yeah always go for the beard scratch always always oh yeah look at me i'm
Oh, I'm scratching my hair, my beard, picking my nose. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I would never, I would never in, in any other capacity do anything that is like, uh, you know, criminal in any meaningful way, please. So, but like that is built in, uh, anxiety from, you know, living in a fucking police state. Like America is, is kind of dog shit with this stuff. I, I've personally never felt. I personally never felt comfortable talking to a dude with a fucking gun whose hand is on his goddamn holster when he's having a conversation with me. I'm not going to be comfortable talking to fucking cops uh, when, you know, anyway, there's, there's more reasons for why, but I won't, I don't want to fully get into it, but yeah, I just, I have not had good experiences with cops. All right. So I'm always shocked. Even when like white people say like they have not had good experience or they've had good experiences overall with cops. <sighs> Because there is a gigantic power imbalance. Um. Like that, if you are being, uh, you know, like cordial, polite, and you comply and you're not aggressive or abrasive or rude to them, I, I think that most things will probably go fine. Now, is there a, can a, a chance or a case of them not going fine? Yes, I think so. Is that, chase, is that chance harder or longer? Fuck. God damn it. Um, I'm, I'm distracted because I'm reading things. He's saying that, that he's going to say there's a chance that like things might go south and that it chance is higher if you're a black person. Um, is that chance um, larger if you are a minority? I think you can easily make that argument and I would probably err on the side of it being true. From what I've seen, I think that it is true. The fact is, though, that it doesn't change the fact that it does not change your behavior. You should still do what I'm saying. You see what I'm saying? Are you picking up what I'm putting down here? Uh, you should watch the videos uh, where the guys bait the police and committing First Amendment violations. I have no idea about that. D does that make sense? Yeah, statistically where cops are places in NYC, I'd say yeah. yeah. Uh, this is not an unreasonable position to have. I think this is the reasonable position that almost any normal person has. That yes, while minorities might get targeted more often, it's not like people are getting shot and killed on the streets every single day. It's not open season on people, but okay, there are- Okay, this is America. People are getting shot and killed on the streets every day and also in their homes. Everyone has a gun. Uh, so that's not true, but <laughs> also quite literally false. I mean, Baltimore is a great example of this. It's a city where people are getting shot and killed every fucking day, 300. 300 murders, like, on average. So, that's literally every day. So, that's... But but I think he just means, like, people aren't getting shot and killed uh, by cops every day. Which is true. People aren't getting shot and killed by cops every day. But that's, like, I don't know. I don't know how to, like, I, I don't know what to say to that talking point. Because it's, like, like there should be very, very little murders. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, not... Not like, oh man, they're not getting killed every day. I mean, how many how many people have cop cops killed uh, this year? I think it's like one thousand people so far, right? Um, so it's not every day. It's like it's it's more than that. It's uh, like around three a day. Three years. So it's like cops are literally killing people every day, uh, more than every uh, more than once a day, like three to four people a day, but killing is the tip of the iceberg, right? I mean, it's like a permanent end. Cops so far in 2022 have killed 427 people. 380 of those people's races were unknown. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Interesting. A lot of a lot of unknown races out there of people being murdered by the police. Uh, Thanks. Again, for the just to appreciate you. I wonder. I wonder what race these people are. Who knows? How many of those killed were warranted and from self defense and return fire? Uh, self defense and return fire are entirely separate. Uh, subjects uh, in this situation, every fucking cop Hope killing. Doing good like every man. time a cop kills someone, they claim self defense. So, uh, good luck. How you got some boot gobblers in here all the time for some reason, dude? I, I have thirty three thousand people in here. Of course, there's gonna be hella people in here that fucking gobble the boot. You know, gobble gobble. They're Americans, dude. Americans are fucking cucks. Like, sorry, it's just the truth. We are literally worse than the fucking French, and I. It pains me to admit this, but we are literally worse than the fucking French in like Lived in New being cucked, years, okay? And then Denmark for a couple. Americans Went fancy themselves to be like brave warriors who are like, you know, gonna fucking rise up in a moment's notice now and like do the right so thing and yada yada. 
But like ultimately when push comes to shove, we're a bunch of pathetic little fucking pushovers who absolutely love swallowing the boot hole and making it a whole ass meal for the day. French or S tier protesters? No, I know, dude. That's what I mean. That, that's what I'm talking about. Like even the fucking French, which Americans largely think are like pathetic and cowardly, uh, like have a stereotype for giving up or whatever, are way, way more aggro towards cops. But of course, there is a uh, a part of that happens because in France, a cop is infinitely less likely to carry a weapon. In France, a cop is infinitely less likely to use a weapon on you. You know what I mean? And by weapon, I mean a gun. Sorry. Like, they, of course, carry batons and shit. So, like, you know, that's that's the main difference there. And that's a civilized country. And I've said this before, <coughs> and people get very mad at me for saying this, but, like, in civilized countries, cops and citizens are at the same level. Okay? That's how it's supposed to be. And that actually uh, creates a system where, you know, cops can't fucking act like uh, these brutal fucking warlords towering over an entire uh, entire demographic of people. You can't do that. That's crazy. Yeah, Arm with a baguette, wee oui, wee. Oui. Most fucking cops in other, in European, and French cops are still brutal. I'm not even saying that, like, French cops aren't brutal. But in comparison to American cops, you're out of your fucking mind. Yeah, in Spain, you can ar actually argue with the police and they don't pull the gun on you. Yeah. Like, beat cops, they have a pistol on their side, dude, all of them. Beat cops, often, depending on where they're at, depending on where they're fucking walking around, don't, aren't armed like American cops are, okay? French cops literally walk around with FALs. Yes, you're talking about gendarme, or you're talking about, like, fucking specific types of police. In, in Have you seen Times Square? Yeah, if you go to fucking Paris, and, and you go to, like, a fucking heavily... Uh, a population dense a area with like a lot of tourists and shit. Yeah, they do have like counterterrorism measures and shit like that. What the fuck are you talking about? That's that's just how it is. Those are militarized police. I'm talking about fucking beat cops in in a normal uh in a in a normal fucking conversation uh, that you're having with like a normal police officer. American cops don't just have fucking pistols. They have in in close reach a fucking AR-15 in their car. Okay. Shotguns and AR-15s. They are heavily militarized. The average police officer in the United States of America is infinitely more militarized than the average police officer, like especially a beat cop, in any other country. Do you think that that doesn't factor in to the dynamic between a cop and a fucking citizen that they're detaining or arresting? Of course that's a fucking huge dynamic. Uh, of course that plays into that dynamic. Yes, I have seen the movie La Haine. Nique la police. Uh, great movie. And not only, not only that, but also, not only that, but the likelihood that they, even if they have a gun, the likelihood that they will use the gun is tremendously fucking low, okay? There are times when cops are supposed to be fucking brutal, like Uvalde, okay? And they're not. And in a lot of instances, cops are not supposed to be brutal, and they are. Police officers like everyday do bad policing. things, and they should... Murders on the job, on the force... Uh, is, is just the tip of the iceberg. Constantly pulling people over. Constantly detaining people. Constantly fucking, uh, uh, you know, uh, forcing them to comply with you for your own personal fucking uh, interests because you're scared or because you, wanna, you need to make an arrest quota to make it seem like you're doing your fucking job. That stuff is completely, completely unacceptable. And yes, if you want to talk about a fucking cop that wanted to change the system from within, Chris Dorner is a great example of this. He tried to. And then he took matters into his own hands. So, you know, not great overall when you when you join the police force to be and want held to accountable, it. like probably what happened here in Uvalde. Uh, that doesn't mean that you should amend your behavior. It doesn't mean that you should approach interactions with the police as if that's going to happen. And I find people that peddle that ideology to be putting their viewers and their audience at risk. I think by telling people that like, oh, you could get shot, you could get hurt like this, all it does is it escalates tensions and it makes things worse. I do think you can get shot. They have a gun. They literally have a gun. And 1,000 deaths per year demonstrably shows that like they do shoot at least around three to four times a day and kill. So, yes. But that is part of the reason why, yes, of course, you should not try to run away 
And as Asmongold is saying, try to comply as best as possible. But that might not necessarily stop them from beating on you. That's just my take. No matter how hard you bend over, you still might get fucked. So, so that's, that's really what I'm saying. I, I, I don't think that this, this is probably what I would assume 80% of people think. Yeah don't, be, yeah, don't be a dick to people and things will probably go fine. Keep in mind, uh, the, the cop might be scared and is doing his job too. Well, that's the thing, right? It's like, obviously, cops are fucking freaking out. They're scared. Yeah, I mean, imagine like your- Cops are such bitches, dude. I, I, I have no respect. I'm sorry. I just don't. They are literally the most, like, sniveling, cowardly, pathetic little fucking bitch boys, dude. You want to know why there isn't a fucking narrative like this around firefighters? Because they're not fucking murdering people regularly, okay? You want to know why people aren't talking about fucking landscapers like this? Because, yeah, you might get fucked by a landscaper, okay? And I don't mean consensually. I'm talking like they might fucking hit you in the wallet, all right? But ultimately, despite ha being a much more dangerous job than policing, they don't fucking kill you, okay? And get away with a murder. It's just not happening. There is no thin green line where a landscaper is like, sorry, I'm going to cut your fucking head off with these gigantic scissors. They are pathetic sniveling, cowardly little man-children. The worst fucking people from your high school getting together, uh, armed to the fucking gills, with no accountability whatsoever, and the only training that they're getting is to fucking mag-dump you at the first sight of fucking distress. That's terrifying. And it's fundamentally flawed. And something needs to happen. Like, this needs to change. Hasman, you shouldn't be scared and just comply, but cops are rightfully scared, though. Yeah, that's, like, wild that he turned it around and said cops are also rightfully scared. Like, I don't, I don't get it. Why aren't more fucking retail workers killing people is the real question. Why aren't delivery drivers murdering people? They have a more dangerous job than cops. Yeah, being a roofer. Why aren't roofers fucking just unloading on people, you know what I mean? You're walking up to a car, the guy could have a fucking gun. Like, that's happened too. I could see that happen easily. You're thinking logically. Yes, this is the logical conclusion to have. Uh, exactly. Okay, this part I don't disagree with. Because America is armed to the fucking teeth. And in order to... And I, I've talked about this before, even with Uvalde. Like, that's why you have to fucking disarm both demilitarize the police and disarm the population to a certain degree. Make it harder to get a gun. Because the fact that, like, everyone has a gun makes the, the, the fucking pathetic little uh, uh, potato bag population of police officers' jobs even fucking harder. They're already not doing a good job. They're already not doing a good job, and it's, like, even fucking harder to, to do that job when everyone is armed to the fucking teeth. Uh, anyway. Um, cops are enforcers, uh, not the means of changing social standing of people. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Honestly, no need to keep arguing. You said it perfectly. Yeah. I mean, uh, th here's the thing. Is that speaking extemporaneously on stream, I, I do sometimes make generalizations, and it is not as simple. I will admit, it is not as simple as, you know, things are going to probably go fine or not. Or I, I think things are probably going to go fine. It's fucking true. But, like, it, it, these things don't happen. Of course they happen, and that's why they're news stories whenever they do. Uh, they're really bad. I don't... This is a really good take. When a cop walks up to a guy in the car, the guy in the car might have a gun. When a guy sees a cop walking up to his car, he knows the cop has a gun. I think the guy in the car has a more rational cause to be scared. That's perfectly, you're perfectly demonstrating the argument that I was making. Yes. Exactly. That's the point. <laughs> like, and also, you're a random American citizen. You might have a gun. You might be a violent person with that gun. But we know cops are fucking violent with guns. It's like when America says, like, oh, man, another country can't have nuclear weapons. What if they use it? It's like, bitch, you're America. The only country that used nukes on a fucking civilian population. What do you mean? You're the only country that did this. <laughs> so far. <laughs> it's so stupid. Why can cops shoot people but not school shooters? I wish. That's the one time where the, all the gear is, is, it makes sense. I don't think anybody really supports them. What I'm saying here, going back to my point, I think we've completely fucking deviated from that, is my point is that the officers at Uvalde who are protecting what seems to be a gross mismanagement that resulted in kids getting killed, the cops that are doing that are escalating the tensions between the public and the police at large in the entire country. That's the point that I'm really making. 
Because every single time that somebody has an interaction with a police officer now, there is now this context behind it that there are these officers out there that could do these bad things. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, they should have gone. Yeah, in there, there's a there's uh, a gen there is a uh, there's a negative attitude towards cops. Yeah, it's true. Uh, except for you know where there isn't, and uh, in in power centers there certainly isn't. Um, but that negative attitude towards cops comes from again them being them being fucking murderous and violent in areas where they're not supposed to, and then them not doing the fucking murder and the violence in areas where they are supposed to. Because they just suck. They suck. There's no other fucking job other than like politicians where they are so routinely rewarded for bad behavior and can fucking cry all the goddamn time. I was saying this like earlier today on my fucking go live post on my Instagram, but I'm like, like I'm a fucking Twitch streamer and we deal with more shit. Nobody thinks that we're doing like something important and we're not. But goddamn, dude, like, if you're fucking bad at your job to this degree at a systemic level, you can't fucking constantly cry about it. You, 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 you can't. You're just bad. You gotta do, do better. Do better. It's wild. When a fucking, when a minimum wage employee with no fucking benefits in comparison to a police officer fucks up at their job as routinely as a cop does, no one's fucking dying and they still get fired. When a cop fucks up at their job, someone is fucking dead now. And yet, for no re for some reason, they're not getting fired. Nope, can't do it. Because, and you might ask why, because that's the point. That's the fucking point. They're supposed to be doing the, the, uh, that kind of brutality. Because as long as they do it to the right people, then it's not that big of a problem, okay? And that's why, like, here, I mean, this is a great example of this. Here's a doctor, Dr. Jeffrey Epstein, in Orlando, being arrested at the Orlando International Airport after causing a bizarre disturbance. Do you have training, genius? There's no alcohol. You want to test me? Come arrest me. Give me a flight. They're arresting me. They're arresting me. They're really de-escalating. Hey, you know what you're talking about, right? Stop I'm not. Do not hurt me. Do not hurt me. You understand? Not be rough with me. Look at them. They're, look at them. They're gonna beat me up. Don't beat me up, you motherfucker. Don't beat me up. Look at them. Oh my god, I can't believe they're doing this. Oh my god. Hey, hey, look what they're doing. Oh, get the other side. I'm not listening. You're being rough with me. You treat me like a black person. Uh, Hassan, cops are incompetent fascist chuds. Also, Hassan, cops should have a monopoly on guns. Dude, unfortunately, if you're literally fucking 12 IQ, okay, you probably shouldn't have a gun. Clearly, you are the number one person who should not have a gun. You are too intellectually uh, stunted to be able to purchase a firearm. I literally said, disarming the population starts with demilitarizing the police, okay? Is what I said. Do you think I think cops should have a monopoly on guns? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. What are you going to do, by the way? Are you going to kill someone? Is that what you're saying? Are you going to fucking kill someone when they come to your house? Are you going to kill the cops when they try to fucking arrest you or some shit? Like, what, what does this take? You're, uh, you're a fucking... You are such a coward that you do not even have the courage to put your fucking real name and face on your Twitch chat... Meanwhile, you're acting like you're gonna be fucking John Rambo over here with like when when push comes to shove with your fucking weapon, dude. Yeah, totally. How about you fucking post your address in here and and also your name and face, and then we'll talk, okay? But you can't, you can't act like you're gonna fucking like do the right thing, brother. Like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm, I got this, baby. I'm gonna fucking do it, dude. I'm gonna do it, dude. I'm gonna fucking defend myself and my family, dude. Like, yeah, totally, bro. Totally. You're definitely going to do that. Okay, stop posting the address of the White House in the chat, please. And stop posting the fucking address from Nemo as well. Just stop posting addresses in the chat, you fucking weirdos. You're going to get, like, you're going to get clapped. I don't know. The, the idea that, like, Uvalde... This also goes back to... Um, this also low-key goes back to, to the, the Uvalde negligence, which we're going to be talking about, and Joe Rogan defending the police because he's such a gigantic bootlicker. Because it's just, 
it's pretty funny seeing people like rush to try to defend police even in a circumstance where they're so obviously in the wrong uh cost lives i think so so i i think that's i i think what i'm saying is completely logical it's completely logical there is and, and this is i'm trying to give people the best advice that i think uh that i think so and uh let's see here uh so it's your fault if the relationship is soured it doesn't matter if it's your fault or not See, like, I don't care about whose fault it is. I care about giving people information that's going to make them, that it's, it's going to lead them towards the best path of their life. Sometimes it's more important to live another day than try to sit there and, like, argue with a police officer. I, I think that you're right. Like, I, I agree with the point that you're making, but I just don't think that that means that you should change your behavior. Like, I, I'm being pragmatic. I agree with you, but that doesn't change what you should do. So even when the cops are wrong, they're right? Yeah, whenever the guy that has a gun is wrong, is wrong, they're still right because they have a fucking- Wait, what? Okay, that's entirely different than like what he was saying earlier. Okay, I mean, I agree with this part. Like, yes, it is a terrifying experience to talk to a fucking dude who has a gun. Focusing on Asma's one bad take from a- Focusing on Asmin's one bag take from a clip is just fueling hate towards him. You should know that sucks. First of all, I love Asmin Gold. Secondly, I literally started this process because I wanted to see his entire perspective. And lastly, I also mentioned that Asmin Gold is oftentimes a very open minded person who could change his perspective on an issue such as this one. Lastly, I am a fucking Twitch streamer who has not even a fraction of the size of his perspective. And not only that, but he's also coming around to the position that I had as well. That's what I would do. That's common sense. Yeah, I'm saying stuff for being fulfilling prophecy. You treat them with rudeness. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's a pathetic take. <laughs> What's wait, wait wait? What do you think you're gonna do? Which will accomplish literally nothing. Are you kidding me? Look, I'll show you something. Um, uh, let me see here. Uh, so, oh, you're not going to get anything out of it. Uh, here, uh, take a look at this. Uh, fuck, what's this here? Uh, New York City spent $230 million on NYPD settlements last year. It's just simple. Like th this is the thing. Wait, what does he? What does he it, mean? Is that because people were not complying with the police? Because that that argument is quite literally taxpayers footing the bill when cops are unironically being violent, fucking unaccountable thugs. There's no way that he just like. Oh, the, he's the, talking about suing the police. Like it, it's something that can happen. Yeah, but that doesn't change the reality that like. Okay, so here's the thing. People do file complaints against the police, and they should. You 100% should do that. And you can successfully sue uh, police. As a matter of fact, it's a big part of like where the police budget goes to, or rather the, the aftermath of the city budget goes to, to defend these cops. So, but the issue is like, even if you fucking comply, no, he's saying that if you sue them, you will get a return. Um, that's true, except lawsuits in this country are not 100% guaranteed. You might have a hard time finding a, a proper lawyer for it. Uh, there are plenty of incredible lawyers out there who will absolutely fucking destroy uh, cops in, in the court system, and that's great. But that takes many years. And oftentimes that victim compensation is given to family members. You want to know why it's given to family members? Because you're fucking dead, <laughs> okay? You're dead. Or you already lost your job. And your life is fucked. And it's such a minute and, and random little thing that, uh, it, it, that people overlook. But, uh, you know, you, you already fucking, they already ruined your life in that situation. And also, ultimately, uh, a lot of those people, and Sean the Black is correct here, he says, his take hinges on all people being brutalized or being disrespectful. Just comply wouldn't have helped George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, any number of high-profile incidents. Of course not. Daniel Shaver did comply. He was still mercilessly and ruthlessly executed. His cop now gets uh, PTSD payments from the murder. 
Uh, qualified immunity exists law, so it's really hard to sue a police officer. No, qualified immunity doesn't fucking matter in the in in. Uh, no, your qualified immunity is uh, qualified immunity matters when it comes to legal uh, repercussions, but civil litigation, which comes after that fucking legal process, is oftentimes. Uh, I mean, is exactly what he's talking about here. You can sue cops in a civil case, but again, uh, Philando Castile complied. You know. Uh, but ultimately, it doesn't matter. Those are outliers, bruv. Chances are you won't be George Floyd. Well, I am white. So, yes, those chances are very little uh, in comparison to George Floyd. I'm white and also uh, affluent. So, yeah. Cops also got, the cop also got to keep his ear fucked ejection port dust cover after filing for bankruptcy. Yeah. He used his own personal weapon, too. There are plenty of instances where people comply and they still get uh, killed. Wait, did I say criminal? Yeah, uh, the, the criminal suit oftentimes favors the cops because they have very little accountability. It's built into the system for them not to get punished for doing cop shit, which is killing people, okay? That's a part of doing cop shit. Uh, civil litigation follows afterwards where victims can get compensated, but it doesn't matter because you can't fucking bring someone back to life once they're dead. And as I already showed you, cops are killing three to four people a day. You know what I mean? That's three to four families that will never be able to bring back their children or their wives, husbands. I think Asmongold understands, however, um, I think Asmongold understands, however, that, uh, you know, cops are still heavily armed, armed to the gills. And that's a, that's a dangerous predicament to, I mean, that's certainly dangerous. It's a, it's a dangerous experience to talk to someone who's heavily armed and has like used their gun before. In these cases all the fucking time yeah it's taxpayers money yeah it, it, it definitely is the money comes from taxpayers not the cops it doesn't affect you does it i i agree with that yeah it's taxpayer money that's why i think bad cops are an issue absolutely yeah most lawsuits against city fail only the most egregious ones succeed 230 million of them succeeded i think that's a pretty big number hmm. no it wasn't Shit's 230 street, million bro individual a, case it was 230 million dollars in, in victims compensation shit topic no uh, i don't think so just because some people are too emotionally unstable to have a conversation about anything that's not a video game doesn't mean that i shouldn't talk about it i i don't i don't like the idea yeah, i don't think if you to... comply you're gonna be fine i'm gonna be honest i think that like institutionally uh just complying is not going to save you uh in in depending on your your circumstances if you're in a if you're in baltimore it's not saving you okay if you're in st louis it's not saving you if you're in ferguson it's not saving you these are areas where cops literally fucking roam the streets like a violent gang okay and no stop using fucking stop using philando castile and edge cases okay because it is beyond just murder what I'm talking about goes way beyond, well beyond murder. Murder is not the only thing that cops are doing that is fucking horrible. It's the worst thing that they're doing, but the but what I'm talking about is a way of existence for these people, okay? People that live in these fucking black neighborhoods, people that live in these poor neighborhoods, they are getting harassed every fucking day of their lives, okay? Every instance where they are in the presence of a cop is not a positive one, but a negative one for the most part, okay? Even if you're, like, relatively privileged, you probably have seen that kind of fucking annoying nuisance shit from the, the, regular, uh, the, the, the regular way that police operate with, like, quotas and whatnot. Complying with cops. It's also very difficult to comply when a cop has a knee on your neck on a daily basis of being harassed. So, my point is, you can comply, and you should comply if you don't want to fucking be murdered. There are plenty of, like, there are literally... There are things that people... This is like a training that people go through. That's why there's the famous like talk that, uh, that black parents have with their children, right? About police. And, and that also promotes compliance, right? But that's not the end all be all. And if we're going to talk about systemic issues, you know, harm reduction is not where we can stop. When we're talking about systemic issues, when we're talking about fucking uh, police brutality, compliance, especially from a systemic perspective, has nothing to do with this conversation. Okay, and it's just simply, you know, victim blaming uh, for the most part. But yes, individually speaking, uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, of course.
<laughs> I mean, you shouldn't try to box with the police or something, but no one is saying that. Yeah, <laughs> don't don't try to fight the police. No, you will get fucking killed. But the idea that like every single fucking time a cop is like being violent or whatever, it's because of a lack of compliance from the other side is a ridiculous one. And even when there is a lack of compliance, understand that that lack of compliance uh, depending on the situation especially, could be a justified one, okay? Cops are fucking out here stopping you for a busted taillight or not using your fucking turn signal, okay? And they have an AR-15 in the back of the fucking car and they've already beaten your ass one time. You're going to be a little worried. You're going to be a little scared. That is going to show. That fear is going to show in your face. Uh, lower conversations on the stream down to like this really stupid black and white level and never talk about anything complex or uh, important because the most mentally ill 5% of the fucking viewer base is going to take it as like some extreme attack against them and freak out in chat. We just ban them and move on. I'm not going to not talk about things that are just common sense because some people are so fucking radicalized on the internet that they believe some fucking agenda that doesn't even exist. No, I'm not going to do that. This is not going to happen. I'm not going to not talk about things because people will get their feelings hurt over them. That's it. Talking about individual, uh, but not everybody complies. Society, even if people are belligerent, cops shouldn't be shooting them. When did when do you think that I thought like when did you think that I thought cops should shoot people for being belligerent? When did I say that? I never said that. Yeah, th this I, I never said this. Asmund's doing it. He's talking to his chat. He's talking to his chat. That's never good. I as I said, I think that 80, 90% of people like this is the logical conclusion that 80 to 90 percent of people would come to. Uh, I don't think I'm saying anything uh, extreme. I think that this is the norm that most people live their life by. And the reality has been distorted online as if that's not the case. And because of that, it has caused a lot of people to go out and have a completely distorted view on the world. And it's been harmful for everyone. That's it. Yeah, I don't think it's hysteria that people think cops are, uh, you know, scary. Straight up. I don't think it's a consequence of hysteria. I think Asmongold personally understands that as well because he already admitted that, like, it's scary that a guy with a fucking gun is coming up to your car. Now, imagine if that guy with a gun is already a history of, uh, or, or other people that look exactly like him and then operate exactly like him in that position of power have uh, a history of brutalizing you. And people that look like you, of course, that's gonna, you know, that's that's totally reasonable. There's a totally reasonable fucking feeling to have in this situation. Um, so I don't know what else to say other than, uh, than that that is not, it's not like unreasonable hysteria. He wasn't saying it was scary. He's saying the person with the gun in that situation is right. No, he's saying that in order to avoid an altercation with a person with a gun in that situation, you should not do, like, you shouldn't fucking agitate them. Okay? And he's right about that. But uh, obeying the boot, especially when we're talking about systemic solutions, is entirely removed from this conversation, unless you're literally saying that obeying the boot is not going to change the outcome in, like, a lot of circumstances. And I don't think that they're justified in being agitated. I don't even think he thinks that they are. It might have been a. It might have been a. Uh, it might have been a flub. He's also saying it's emotional and illogical to dislike or fear the police, which is some reactionary shit. But he also mentioned why it's logical to fear the police in an individual uh, conversation or altercation with them, because they have a gun and you don't. You know what I mean?